All right, so today we're going to just discuss how we can use the scanner. We're not going to discuss strategy, but how we can scan for anything you want. So the first thing you'll note is in the top left, we have the 15, 30, 60 day and week time frames. We will be adding the month, quarter, year, hopefully today, um, if not, definitely this week. And this allows you to select which time frame you're going to be looking at. So daily, it's going to be all your daily signals and setups. Weekly, weekly signals and setups. We also have scan mode. Scan mode allows you to scan for either signals that are in force or setups that are setting up. So what this means is this. If I want to go to quick filters and look for inside bars, if I scan for setup, you're going to notice we have a setup category. This is showing us things that are currently on the weekly time frame in inside bar setting up for next week. So if we were to go to crowd, click on the ticker, it'll open up our charts. You'll see in the weekly in the top right, we have a scenario 3-1. That is a setup, right? It is not an enforced signal. So whenever we're scanning prior to the bar's closure, looking for setups, we're going to use setup, setup mode. If we're scanning at the close or after the close of the daily bars, we're going to scan setup mode. If we're scanning on the weekend, we're going to scan setup mode. If we're scanning before a new month, we're going to use setup mode. This is how we find our setups. That being said, signal mode will show us inside signals. It's the same category, but it's going to show us directional up or down signals. So if we scan in force, true, we're going to see we have inside up signals in force. And we'll also have inside down signals in force. So we can just filter this by the change and we'll just say FSLR. You'll see this is an inside week up signal in force. So we have all week to go after that until Friday. If we go to inside down, which we can filter here, we can look at, you know, the biggest losers this week, NOC. So you'll see NOC this week, inside week down signal in force. So this is the difference between scan, scanning signal mode and setup mode. Hopefully that makes sense. And we'll talk more about what we can scan for shortly. On the quick filters, you're gonna be able to scan for reversals, hammers, shooters, inside bars, which you'll see if we go to 2-2 reversal in signal mode, it's gonna be all your 2-2 reversals. If we go in setup mode, since a 2-2 reversal is a reversal, it's not a setup, um, it's not gonna show anything. Right? Versus if we go two down in green in setup mode, this will show us potential two two reversals. We're still working on how we want to have this organized. We would love some feedback on what you're thinking um, about that to make it even better. That being said, we have a ton of presets. We also allow you to create your own, which we'll talk about shortly. So if we click this little button, it'll clear all of our filters here and we're just back to normal. If we then take a look at the columns, we can move them. So we can move them wherever we want, which is beautiful. We can also add and remove columns. So if we go to the columns section here on the right, you'll see we have a ton. This is the layout I personally am going to use all the time. So if you want this layout, you can copy it as follows here. And what you can use is things that I don't have here, multiple time frame. So what this shows you is the color of the four time frames or five in this case. This will be updated to be 60 day, week, month, quarter, year once we have that data. You can turn that off. We also have magnitude, so you can know what the magnitude of the trigger is. We also have the trigger level, which these aren't really useful in my opinion. If we go to mag distance, this tells you how big of a magnitude you have. So if you're scanning on setup mode, I'm not exactly sure how it'll work. I imagine it will show you the distance of, you know, the potential magnitude. But if we scan on signal mode, it'll tell you how far if we scan signals that are in force. And let's just say we look at inside signals. If we scan in force, it'll show you how far that distance is. So if we sort by the biggest moves, you'll see like Team, Garmin, GoDaddy, these have bigger distance on their magnitudes. Um, personally, I also don't use that as well. I just look at the charts, but we can remove that. We also have progress to magnitude. So you can look and you can scan. If we right click, it'll auto size, but we can look and scan. So if we scroll to the right, we can scan for the biggest magnitude and we can also see the progress to that magnitude. So you can see team is about 50, 43% of the way there. Garmin is 60% of the way there. And some of these have already hit their magnitudes over here. And if it's over 100%, it means it's exceeding its magnitude. So if we go to SMCX, you'll see on the weekly, it's exceeding its magnitude. So when we look at it, it's going to be 249%. 
And this is gonna be better for like the quarterly, yearly type setups where you have bigger targets and stuff, but hopefully that makes sense. The last thing I can show you is the multi time frame column. You can change the mode. So instead of showing the color of the time frame, you can show setup colorized values. So it's gonna show you setups on each of these time frames, which is gonna be a hard thing to do until you get accustomed to the colors we have. But when I look at this, I can see the weeklies and inside week, in this case to the upside. The daily is going to be a continuation of that, so it's going in that direction. The 60 is currently a shooter since it's blue. The 30 is continuation. And then the 15, I'm actually not sure what this dark green is. But this allows you to glance and see what's going on. We have some plans in the future for updates that'll make a, a different page that can do something similar to this, but much better. That being said, the only other options we have is you can have two bar display for signals so right now you'll see it will show so if we go to signal you'll see it's going to show a lot of three bar patterns you can turn that off and you'll just get two bar patterns which is a preference that sarah has um that being said once you set the columns up the way you want if we go to grid state we can save the current state or restore it to our default so if i restore to default you'll see it goes here and in this case my default was not saved to what i like so i'll add this here and then restore back to default state or save default state my bad you can see we have a lot of buttons but allows you to do whatever you want um that being said we will show you then my filters and how we can filter so if we're scanning like for two up red two down in green which i know a lot of people will be trading setup mode then two down in green or two up in red this will show you all those setups the same thing's true intraday so if you're looking for potential threes intraday you can scan two up in red at the open, right? It's going to show you all those potential threes. And the other thing you can do is with the current candle, previous candle or C1 and previous, previous candle C2 columns, this allows you to scan for whatever you want. So if I want two up in red, but I want a three before it, these are all the potential three threes right now. If they close out three, two up in red, these are all the three, two twos for tomorrow. If I want three ones, we have to clear that filter, but I can scan three, one. Here's all my three, one setups, you can see. So I personally like scanning like this because it allows me to scan for whatever I want. So if I want double inside setups that are breaking today, which I don't know if there is any, doesn't look like there is. Let's just say, we'll clear this out, two, one, two. So any two, one, two setups, here's all the two, one, twos. If I want three, one, twos, put the three there. Here's all the three, one, twos. This is how I like to scan. The other way you can do this is on the day and week time frames, this change dollar and change percent are going to be linked to the day time frame or linked to the week time frame. On the 60 and below, it's going to be linked to the daily time frame. So that being said, if we scan, you know, one, three, one, two up, which actually it doesn't look like we have any. So three, one, two down, but we filter here. We could say greater than or equal to zero. These would be all your three one twos down that are green. So if we go to ADP, you'll see daily three one two down in green. So this is how we can scan and you know customize it to however we want. So once we create a scan like this, let's say it's my potential RevStrat scan. So potential RevStrat scan is what this would be. We can filter it however we like. Go to my filters, and I can delete this one. But I can add a quick filter and say potential one three scan. Save it. And now my custom scan is saved here. So I can just, in one click, find the potential threes. And we will be adding, you know, hopefully the ability to add more than three of these. But that covers most of the functionality of the scanner here. The last thing is the statistics page. The statistics page is going to show you the percentage of twos up and twos down across every sector, as well as the rest of the market. So you'll see today, real estates have the most twos down, which is why they're highlighted in orange. 94% of that sector is a two down. We'll also see utilities are 71% twos down. So these two sectors are the weakest today with the non-cyclicals as well, 77%. And this is your staples sector. But what then we can do is once we have this data, we can either do it on daily, weekly, monthly basis. We can go in there and say, okay, well, we know they're selling utilities or we know they're selling real estates today. Let's go to all those that they're selling. Where are the signals? Like we want signals, right? So we could look for, let's just say inside signals down. Here's all the inside signals down. We can go to the reddest ones. 
And then this will allow us to go and use confirming signals to play things that are already going. So if we look at CBRE, it's a six or a daily inside down. It's a two up and red week. We have an inside 60. So either this goes inside up and tries to firm it up, setting up a rev strat for tomorrow, or it goes inside down or rev strat down and confirms the daily signal. An example of this was today in the health cares. We will see in the XLVs, 64% of them were puking today, which is more than the rest of the market. So we went into the XLVs and we have this big list of health cares. We saw a lot of these go inside 15 this morning. So if we go to REGN on the 15, you'll see it went inside 15 here. You'll see LOI went inside 15 here. These are all setups we could take. And then boom, right? If we go to Amgen, these were taking yesterday's lows inside 15 here for the rev strat. So we can use the daily data to find where the most twos are, where the big sellers and buyers are, and then play confirming signals. And once we get the monthlies and stuff, it's even more you know, useful there where you can see simultaneous breaks. And hopefully that's later today. The last thing I want to show you, though, is when we want to export data, which I imagine a lot of people want to do, you can just right click anywhere in here and you can copy with headers or you can export to CSV. And so if I just copy, I think it copies MCK. So you can see MCK, it gets copied. If I right click and copy with group headers, oops. You'll see it's just going to say symbol and then DHR. Ideally, we would get this whole column. It's probably something we can change. But if we right click export to CSV, you're going to see we get all the data from this whole scanner, which is a beautiful thing. And then what you can do is you can use AI tools and whatnot. So let's say you go on weekly signal and you have, let's just say anything that's enforced with continuity. And we'll say stuff that's going up this week since the market's going up. We can, let's just say filter anything less than 100. We'll just get rid of, or let's just say less than 50. Just get rid of those. Anything with an ATR less than... 2%, we'll get rid of those. So let's just say this is what we're looking at. We can right click, export to CSV, and then what we can do is use something like ChatGPT, and we could say, give me the symbols as a comma separated list. I think I spelled that wrong, but you'll see here. All right, so you're going to see in here, this is a comma separated list of all the symbols there. And then what we can do is use that in the scanner. So if I'm scanning for 30 signals, I can take that list, put it up at the top, and this will show me everything. Even if it's a continuation, it'll show me. So you can see just on here, inside, inside, inside. If we go to setup, this is an inside bar, this is inside, this is inside. So these are setting up and they're setting up on my personalized you know, watch list in quotes. In the future, we'll have custom watch list columns and whatnot that you can add, or I guess a way to save watch lists. And we have so many beautiful ideas. I'm gonna do a live stream sometime, hopefully this week, and we'll discuss those ideas and see what you guys think and if you like the direction we're going. That being said though, this was just the introduction. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions, feel free to shoot me a message anywhere and I'll answer those questions. Discord, Twitter, doesn't matter. But that's all I've got, so adios.